Recently, I came across such conductive ink pens on eBay. And I thought to myself, I highly doubt that you can make a well-working electronic circuit with that. The reason for my thinking this way is that I love creating circuits, for which I have to connect individual electrical components to one another. This way they come together to fulfill a purpose, like for example visually reacting to a music signal. I usually make such circuits by using a perf board, onto which I create solder traces and use copper wires for the connections. Or I come up with a PCB design a bit in advance and simply order professionally made PCBs of my design, onto which I have to solder the components in place in order to electrically connect them through copper traces. Now these two circuit creating methods work perfectly fine for me. But that does not mean that I'm not interested in alternative solutions. That is why I tested conductive 3D printing filament as well as a PCB printer in previous videos. And let me tell you that those alternatives do have their application fields. So needless to say for this video I ordered myself two different types of conductive ink pens in order to find out what their application fields might be when it comes to creating electrical circuits. Which is exactly what we will be finding out in the next couple of minutes. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB and EasyEDA. As you might know, I've been using the EasyEDA schematic and PCB design software for years. And now I'm happy to announce that when you're finished with your PCB design that includes an SMT assembly service, you can like always directly order your PCBs through JLC PCB. But now you get a $10 coupon while doing so. So feel free to join the Easy EDA and JLC PCB user group today. Now after receiving both pens, I have to say that one of them not only looked kids friendly, but also a bit Chinese, while the other one with its warning labels looked a bit more intimidating. And to keep things simple, I will from now on call one pen the silver pen and the other pen the Chinese pen. But anyway, both of them required some intense shaking before usage, which I did next. And for the initial test whether both pens are truly conductive, I simply drew a basic line with no specifications regarding the width onto a piece of paper. One of the first things I noticed though was that the Chinese pen didn't feel like working with me most of the time. And it was a bit awkward to handle the silver pen since you have to constantly apply pressure. But nevertheless, after around 20 minutes both lines were reasonably dry. And by using a multimeter with its resistance function, I was able to measure a value of below 200 ohm for both pens. Which means that they are in fact electrically conductive. But for the upcoming test series, I will solely focus on the silver pen and basically kick out the Chinese one. The reason is not only that the silver one offers a way lower resistance in direct comparison, but also because you cannot solder to the Chinese pen line. I tried all kinds of different techniques and temperatures for the soldering process, but all the ink does is disappearing from the paper surface. That of course makes it way harder to create complicated circuits with more than one component since you have to push onto them in order to make a useful electrical connection. The silver pen on the other hand can be soldered to in a more or less easy way, which solves the problem of creating more complex circuits. So one pen is out, which means we can do a proper resistance, maximum current and frequency test with the silver pen. And I started with the resistance test for which I drew 3 5 cm long lines with a width of 2, 4 and 6 mm onto cardboards, which I then cut out. I used this jig in order to create 3 lines of the silver pen onto a piece of paper. But let me tell you that this was a bit messy, 
And since I'm not able to create perfect lines with the ink with a known height, the following tests will only be approximations. So, after letting everything dry, I soldered wires to the end of all the lines and once again used my multimeter in order to measure the resistance. As it turns out, the average resistance equals around 1.5 ohm per centimeter at a width of 1 millimeter. Which does not sound too bad, but if you directly compare that to a PCB trace with the same width, then you will see that the copper trace features a resistance that is around 350 times lower. And that thought brings me to the current test, in which I let a slowly rising current flow through the just created lines, in order to see at which point the electrical conductivity breaks down. And to my own surprise, while current values beneath 500 mA delivered around the same resistance, at which point the silver ink already really started to heat up, current values of above 500 mA decreased the resistance of the ink noticeably. But eventually it got so hot that it burned the paper surface, which thus acted like a fuse. It seems like the increased temperature due to the resistance of the ink does improve its conductivity. And it also seems to be able to withstand pretty high temperatures. I did not expect that. But overall, due to the rather high resistance of the ink, I would only recommend it for applications below 500 mA, due to high voltage drops. So creating some fancy looking low current LED arts is certainly possible with such a pen. But what about a proper 555 timer circuit that spits out a square wave with variable frequency? The reason why I'm asking like that is that the ink may come with some parasitic inductive and or capacitive properties that could mess with such an AC signal. This can be a problem not only for the 555 timer circuit, but everything that uses a high frequency to communicate, like these LEDs with integrated controller. So I drew two long inclines and hooked my function generator up to them on one side, while I had a look at the frequency with my oscilloscope on the input and output side. And as you can see with the sine voltage test, the frequency does not alter the waveform at all on the outputs. But while using a square wave, it seems like the waveform was a bit damped at higher frequencies. Which is completely normal though. That means data communication should not be a problem at all with this ink. And thus the frequency test was passed. And that basically means it was go time for my 555 timer circuit ink design. Which was actually a small riddle to figure out how to do. Because you only have one side and no wires were allowed. But eventually I found a fitting design. And after securing all of the components in place with either the silver ink, which can also be used as a kind of glue, or by using solder, the circuit was complete. And as you can hear with your ears or see on the oscilloscope, the circuit works perfectly fine. At this point I was done with my experiments. So what is my verdict? Well, since the ink works on a multitude of surfaces, it is definitely the best way if you want to make some creative electronics art pieces with LEDs or something similar. The ink can also be used in certain circumstances to patch a damaged conductive trace. And while it does make it a bit easier to work with bigger SMD ICs, I have to say that you cannot create fine enough lines for super tiny SMD ICs. And since of course the properties of the ink are lacking in comparison to copper, there is not much application when it comes to creating reliable electronic circuits. Aside from maybe playfully teaching beginners the concept of circuit design. So overall, while the ink actually impressed me more than I initially thought, it still can mostly only be used for creative art pieces. Which is actually not a bad thing. And with that being said, thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. 
stay creative and I will see you next time.